All right, so we're talking about who God is. We know from the Genesis that God is the Word. You know, the Word was God. And the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word. And God is our Father. Um, he is the one who created the heaven and earth. He's the one that we come out of. He's the one that Adam came from. Um, and Adam then created... Um, gave birth and multiplied and was fruitful and so here I am and here you are through that lineage all right um and God sits on the throne and Jesus is sitting on his right hand side so with that said who is Jesus right he's the son of God basically he is the word in flesh he came down God gave his only son, like how Abraham had his only son, Isaac, that, you know, if you look in um, the story of Isaac, um, basically, Abraham and Sarah, so it was called, it was first Ab, um, Abram and then Sarai, and then their names were changed to Abraham and Sarah, and of course there was Hagar and Ishmael. We're not going to talk about that. That's another whole Bible study. <laughs> But um, after trying hard, um, Sarah had a baby and Isaac was born. And then God uh, wanted to see how obedient, you know, um, Abraham is. And said, you know, sacrifice your child, your Isaac. And instead of, um, you know, uh, Abraham took Isaac to sacrifice him. And then God stopped him because he saw that, you know, um, Abraham is very obedient of God and he has the fear of the Lord in him so he brought a animal to take in place of Isaac so Isaac did not die but Jesus died for our sins like he really sacrificed his life he was beaten bruised he has thorn you know helmet thorn he was pierced his hands like in here nails you know he died his blood was shed for you and my sins and so thank you, Jesus, for dying for us and, you know, relinquishing us from sin, you know. Um, and his blood still has power. And, you know, the blood of Jesus still has power. So um, so basically, Jesus, the only son of God, came down in flesh as a, a man. He was born through um, Mary, who is basically, um, she was a virgin. Um, Mary, at that time, Mary was um, engaged to Joseph, and an angel visited Mary and said, you know, you have, God has seen favor, you know, you have favor with the Lord, so um, you're going to give birth to a son, and you should name him Jesus. Um, so basically, let's, let's read about, you know, how Jesus was born. Um, how was Jesus born? So. All right, so in John, uh, first, uh, wait, hold on, not John, <laughs> um, Luke one twenty six, Luke one twenty six. okay? So turn your Bibles to Luke one twenty six. <laughs> um, in the sixth month of uh, Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to um, Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin plagued to be married. I mean, excuse me, to a virgin pledged, not plagued, <laughs> a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Um, so like I said, he was engaged to Joseph to be married. The angel went to her and said, her meaning Mary, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. I mean, just think about it. Put yourself in Mary's position. You are there and then an angel comes. Mostly in, in those in the, in the, in the times, um, angels will come and say, you know, do, do not be scared. And they'll say greetings, you know. You know, just to put yourself in Mary's position. Angel come, Angel Gabriel come and said, Greetings! Insert your name. 
Okay, greeting, Bernice. Um, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. I'm going to be like, okay. <laughs> First of all, if I if, if you if anybody saw an angel for the first time, they'd be like, "Oh my God!" Right? It's it's a privilege to see an angel, like you know, in a spiritual realm. It is. Um, trust me, it is really a privilege to see that. But anyway, Mary was like, you know, Mary was troubled, and she was like, "What kind of greeting is this?" And the angel then proclaimed and said, "Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son." And you will, you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, of course, uh, and will be called the Son of the Most High. Most High meaning God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end, and that is very, very true. His kingdom still lives on to the end of time. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I'm a virgin, because I mean, I'm not going to go through sex ed with you. You already know how. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of Man. So obviously Jesus was not born out of... Um, normal pregnancy like how normal conception like how you and i are you know have a father and mother together husband and wife together have you know on your married bed married bed married bed you know um that didn't happen joseph did not have any intercourse with mary mary was born with the holy spirit coming over overshadowing um, Mary and then he, she had it. It was a, it was a supernatural birth, basically a supernatural conception of Jesus. Right? Um, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. So Elizabeth was um, related to Mary. And what happened was that she was really, really old. And, you know, the angel told um, Elizabeth's um, husband that they're going to have a baby. And he had a little bit of disbelief. So he was mute for a long time <laughs> until the baby was born. <laughs> so um, basically the angel was telling him, hey, you know, God can do anything. And that tells you too, whoever you are watching this, if you're having a hard time, conceiving when you're married know that God can do anything if he can let Sarah have a baby Isaac if he can like Elizabeth come you know have a baby at old age with gray hair he can do it too I actually know somebody who is 90 90 years old 90 pregnant I, I well I was in the news so I'm not 100% sure but I know people who are like in their 70s pregnant 50s pregnant so don't dismiss, you know, if you're having a hard time conceiving in your marriage. Know that we serve a God who can do anything. He can let somebody who's 90 have a baby. So you are not, you know, God is not a respecter of people. He He can bless you. You just, you just have to pray and ask Him, you know. Because the Bible said we have not because He asks not. So pray and believe in your heart that it is so, it is done. All right. So if you can, if you can do it for Elizabeth at her old age, you can do it for people that I know that are in their fifties and seventies that are pregnant. He can do it for you too. All right. So for no word from from God will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail, and that's that. His word does not return back to him void. It accomplish what he says it should go and do in due time. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be, may your word to me be uh, fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So basically she accepted what the angel said. And that's one thing that you should know about God is that when he, um, 
he, he's not a forceful God. He's a gentleman. He doesn't uh, push us to do things. He allows us to choose. His ways are always better than our ways. So he, uh, you know, the angel came like, hey, this is what God is saying you're going to be doing. And the angel allowed Mary to say, okay, I accept that. Yes, you know, God, God is not going to um, let you do something if you if you not agree. Like he 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 he's not he's a he likes to hear your um, your choice because you have a choice. You know, like how you have a choice to follow Jesus if you want to. It's a it's a choice. It's not like he's gonna force you. There's no forcing when it comes to God. Okay, with everything, even using your gift that he's given you. You know, if you have a gift to preach, a gift, you know, even me doing this, was, this is not forceful thing. This is a desire that, you know, I have in me. And that's a part of my gifting, is to sit here and talk about the Word of God. I love to do that. And He has given me wisdom to do that because I have said yes to that. So, whatever it is that, you know, you feel like God is telling you to do, maybe you are not married, you're not going to give birth to a child, you know, Jesus number two. No, that's no such thing. Only Jesus, number one. <laughs> Only Jesus is there. But, you know, whatever it is um, that God is calling you to do, or, you know, you feel in your heart, excuse me, you feel in your heart that you really, you know, you should be doing this, God is there to say, okay, you want to do it, or no, you don't want to do it. You know, he's going to help you to um, find what it is that you want to do. So God is not forceful. He's not, but it's better to say yes to God than to say no, because he's going to help you. When you say yes, he's going to have a cloud of witnesses to help you. Like the Bible said, you're going to have a cloud of witnesses to help you run the race that he set before you. You know, if you look at the clouds, it's endless. It's huge, right? It's not just one spot. It's like a lot. It's like all around the world, right? So you have endless people. So anyway, that's just, yeah. So back to what I was saying about Jesus. This is how Jesus was born, through Mary. So Jesus had a mother on earth. And he doesn't have a mother in heaven. His mother is Mary that he had on earth when he was born. You know, of course, um, people say that, you know, he had, he has a mother, like a spiritual mother in, in heaven. And he has a, a mother on earth. I don't know anywhere in the Bible that said he had a spiritual mother in heaven. The only thing that I know is he has a father in heaven. Where he's sitting at the right hand side of, of God. And he, it says that he has a um, uh, a mother on earth that he, he, he came from. You know? So, that's how Jesus was born. And the purpose of his, his birth is to basically die for our sins for you and I and when he was on earth like when you look in Luke um, the book of Luke basically talk about Jesus the life of Jesus basically you know when he was born he um, he um, he went over he preached even at a little age you remember when in the Bible um, his mom and Joseph were looking for him and they couldn't find him and they were like where's Jesus and he was like don't you know I'm supposed to be at my father's business you know in my father's house and they're like, oh, he was already preaching in the, you know, in the temple. So, you know, he did a lot of miracles. Um, he healed the sick. He fed thousands of people with fish and bread, loaf of bread. Um, he, um, he healed the blind. He, um, he died for our sins. That's a big deal. And then he rose up on the third day. So he rose up on the third day. He did not die, die. He got up and he resurrected to heaven. And so, you know, he gave communion, which is his blood and his um, his body to remember him, you know. And he had the 12 disciples. Um, and he had his really close, close disciples, which is Peter, James, and John. Um, so he, he was like, he was just like you and I on earth. And he was tempted just like you and I get temptations you know and what did he do he used the word of God against 
the enemy to tempt him, you know, because Satan came and tempted him when he was in the mountain, and he said, you know, if you turn all this, you can, you, you know, you can turn all this um, stone into bread, and he was like, you know, the Bible says that men shall not live by bread alone, you know, and then the, the devil was like, you know, throw yourself down, you know, um, and the angels will catch you, and it was like, the Bible says that we should not test our God, you know, our, the Lord, we shouldn't te test him, you know, so, like he he used the word against temptation, so he he got, he went through things that we normally go through, temptations, you know, things that we have, we human beings go through. He he went through that too, but how did he do it? How did he overcome those things? He used the word of God. So, yeah. So this is Jesus, you know. Um, and then when before he left, um, he he had a last supper the last supper with the with the disciples you know he, he talked to them about that he has to go you know but he's leaving the holy spirit with them you know um so basically just to sum up who you know jesus is um he was the word in flesh came down to live among us his people did not embrace